I'm very happy to kick today off with a presentation of LIDS. Uh, I hope to kick it off, kick it off uh, on a good note, suggesting that LIDS is a biotech company with a relatively low risk in terms of development. Our most uh, advanced product, uh, product candidate is already phase three ready, and with a very short time frame to key value inflection points, uh, given what I just said. My name is Anders Manson. I am the CEO of the company since a few months back, uh, and I come with a wealth of experience not only from biotech, but also from large multinationals where I've uh, been involved heavily in M&A and licensing activities. And I aim to demonstrate why that is important to LIDS in this phase. So let's uh, go into a brief explanation of our technology. We are a technology-based company, and we have a technology that allows for intratumoral depot injection. Why is that important? Well, it's important because with intratumoral injections, you can put the drug right into the tumor, thereby being able to put an effective dose into the tumor while avoiding systemic exposure and thus minimizing the systemic side effects. Our depot technology is specifically designed for this in that our depot solidifies immediately after injection. It's a liquid when you inject it, but it solidifies immediately. And the solid depot can withstand pressure without the risk of dose dumping. Uh, and it can be expect inspected at all times uh, using imaging technologies such as ultrasound. Uh, we operate on two business models. One is to collaborate with big pharma companies, and we have a famous big co pharma company that we are collaborating with, which sort of validates our, our technology. Uh, and the aim of that is obviously to, to reach an agreement whereby we have a technology license and will receive a part of the revenue uh, once the drug is on the market. Uh, and we also develop our own pharmaceuticals on the basis of pharmaceutical candidates on the basis of our technology and on the basis of established APIs in the market. And I will introduce a few of those uh, later on. So what I hope to be able to demonstrate today is that intratumoral ejections is an exciting field uh, and that intratumoral depot adds benefit. Uh, that we have a proven technology uh, for intratumoral depot with unique features that fit that application perfectly. Uh, and that we have product candidates for uh, intratumoral injections that are attractive for big pharma licensing and acquisitions even in early stages. And that our most advanced pipeline project, Liproca Depot, is now ready for phase three and up for licensing. Uh, so zero development risk remains uh, and deal benchmarks way surpass the market cap of LITS. So let's deep dive a little bit into our, uh, our depot formulation. What's the secret of the source? We use calcium sulfate as the substrate, and the secret of the source is possibly uh, that we make microgranules uh, with different shape, different size, uh, and different density. And by controlling these uh, parameters, we're able to control the release profile of the depot. Uh, so that means that you can make a short depot just a few weeks, or a long depot up to six months. Uh, so again, the problem that we're addressing is the traditional and prevalent problem in, in developing uh, cancer therapy. It's the dosing trade-off. You want to have as effective a dose as possible to reach the cancer cells, and you want to have a dose that doesn't expose healthy tissue uh, to a lot of side effects. So there's a dosing trade-off when you shoot it directly into the blood circulation. But by using an intratumoral depot injection, you're able to put an adequate dose or a maximally effective dose, actually, into the tumor while avoiding the systemic circulation and thereby avoiding uh, the side effects. Also, of course, a depot uh, gets rid of the compliance problems of having to take uh, very frequent injections. So it's a practical and versatile formulation, and as I said recently, uh, we, we are able to formulate depots that can last all the way up to six months, uh, but also applications with much shorter depots are possible. And we can do this with different types of drugs. I'll show you uh, very soon that we're able to do this with hormonal therapy, with uh, chemotherapy, and with immune oncology therapy. Uh, so different types of uh, products, different types of sizes of molecules, and diff different types of cancers are applicable to this. And uh, with local cancer, there's, of course, only one tumor to treat. But with uh, metastasized cancer, we're counting on the abscopal effect. And I'll show you later how that works. Uh, and again, our depot is fully biodegradable and leaves no residue, so you can do uh, repeat injections. 
And this is just a uh, slide to show you the obvious fact that if you use a depot, uh, you're able to avoid a lot of injections or taking pills every day. Uh, and that obviously increases quality of life and certainly compliance in these patients. And together, those uh, attributes also add up to an overall uh, therapy effectiveness. So let's deep dive a little bit into the three categories of product that I aim to talk about today. The first one is Liproca Depot. That's a nanosolid formulated anti-androgen, a testosterone blocker aimed at prostate cancer. Now, if you know your prostate cancer market, you know that it's treated typically with uh, androgen deprivation therapy, which could be either shutting down testosterone or blocking testosterone at the receptor level because the uh, prostate cancer cells proliferate on the basis of having access to testosterone. So blocking it or shutting it down is the standard therapy. The problem of doing that in a systemic way is obviously that you, uh, you become a, a chemically castrated patient with the obvious side effects coming from that, like erectile, erectile dysfunction, loss of libido in the short term, but also metabolic side effects like an increased risk of cardiovascular events in the longer term. So we want to do this, but without the side effects, and that's what we've done. This product is developed all through phase 2b. It's been uh, used in over 100 patients uh, with very uh, good results. So we see exactly the same type of testosterone blockade effects that you see with oral treatment or with systemic treatment, but without the systemic side effects. So we have now discussed with EMA, uh, and we are ready to go for phase three. Uh, that is to say that we are not going to do phase three, but we are going to license this product to a larger pharmaceutical company for phase three and commercialization. And just to make it very obvious what we intend to do here with this product, uh, this is a product that comes in in the early phases of prostate cancer where there used to be uh, antiandrogens in treatment, uh, but they were uh, discarded because of the side effects, uh, the castration side effects. So the obvious uh, possibility is to come here, reintroduce antiandrogens as an early stage treatment instead of just active surveillance, and thereby being able to postpone radical treatments such as surgery, and later on treatments, uh, uh, which is uh, essentially castration therapy, uh, without introducing systemic side effects. The next uh, drug that I will introduce is uh, uh, nanodotax. This is a uh, 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 nanosolid formulated dostaxel, which you might know. It's a very common chemotherapy. Uh, and again, this is really speaking to the principle that I just alluded to, that you're able to give an adequate dose, uh, an effective dose, uh, when you give it intertumorally without exposing the entire body and all the healthy tissues to the uh, potent side effects. Uh, this is uh, going to be tried also in prostate cancer as a focal treatment whereby you inject it into the prostate cancer tumors, uh, avoiding radical therapy and thereby avoiding the side effects of the radical therapy. And the third category is an immuno-oncologic agent. This is a TLR9 receptor agonist. Uh, and this is uh, uh, going to be applied in a metastatic cancer setting on top of uh, checkpoint inhibitor treatment to increase the efficacy. Uh, and we know that there is al already uh, a demonstrated big pharma acquisition interest in this area in Regeneron's acquisition of Checkmate Pharmaceuticals earlier this year for uh, the very tidy sum of $250 million. And this was a TLR9 agonist without a depot formulation, which requires weekly injections. So obviously, uh, the depot can add a significant benefit here. I made a point of not showing too many sciencey slides here, uh, but this is one to demonstrate the principle. Uh, if you look at the left side to you, uh, you can see uh, the uh, illustration of the uh, um, uh, of the abscopal effect. So you see the uh, the effect on the right side of the diagram, which is the high dose. Uh, and if you compare the eff the effect that this has on the treated tumor with the effect that it has on non-treated tumors, you can see it's quite similar. And also, if you look at the right side, you can see the benefit of introducing uh, the drug uh, via intertumoral depot injection is that you can give an adequately uh, effective dose, so you actually gain both a tumor size and a survival benefit. A few words on the company to round it off. We have uh, 
a board of directors and a management that I think is uh, very well composed. It, 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 it spans across different types of competencies, not in the least drug development, of course, which is typical for biotech, uh, but also technology, now business development and finance, which is important. And the financial strategic outlook for our company is that we will refinance early in 2023. Uh, we don't need to do that in a long-term setting because we, we do anticipate that we will be able to license or divest Liproca Depot during the course of next year. Uh, in one year, we will also be able to complete the Phase 1Bs that we will start for Nano Mod and Nano Dotax, making them a Phase 2 ready. Uh, and there's low risk in this because we use established APIs and we have a, a formulation technology that has already advanced to phase three uh, readiness. And we will also solicit further big pharma collaboration. We have J&J, &J, but we want to expand that further. Uh, so yes, Liz is not a single asset company, but a clinically validated technology platform company with low risk in the near term uh, and demonstrated acquisition interest from leading farmers in the areas of interest. And we could always dazzle you with some uh, benchmarks on deals, and they're obviously fantastic in terms of value. As I said, Regeneron was acquire, uh, acquired uh, Jack May Pharmaceuticals to get to their TLR9 project uh, for $250 million. Obviously, only a fraction of that sum of money would be uh, transformative to, uh, to Lids and would certainly uh, surpass our, our current market cap. So, just to summarize, what I hope to have demonstrated here today, but you be the judge of that, is that we, uh, ha we have a very exciting field here in terms of intratumoral injection. It's a way to get away from the dosing trade-off that you have typically when you, when you uh, treat systemically. Uh, that we have a proven technology that has now advanced to phase three readiness for this with unique features, mainly that the depot is rock hard, so you can see it using ultrasound or whatever imaging technology, and that there is no risk for dose dumping. Uh, that we have product candidates that are attractive for big pharma licensing. Regeneron was one benchmark, and you've seen some deals uh, also for prostate cancer. And Liproca depot, uh, or depot is phase three ready, and it's up for licensing now. And all the deal benchmarks, uh, certainly only a fraction of them way surpasses the market cap of Blitz. So I'll just put X's in all of these and hope that you agree. Thank you so much. <laughs> right, thank you, Anders. Do we have any questions for Anders? Got the lady up here. So have you seen any abscopal effect also in the docetaxel project? Yes, we have. But the uh, phase 1B that is uh, going to be applied now is, is mainly there. We mainly go for the local effect. So we inject a large uh, dose of docetaxel into the tumors of the prostate. Uh, and that is a localized uh, prostate cancer. Uh, so, so the abscopal effect is not important for the phase 1B. But we have seen it in prior research. Any other questions? You've shown that you have a pipeline with at least one asset that's ready for licensing, and uh, that's, of course, very exciting. Uh, given the, well, the recent history in terms of licensing deals in the Nordics and Sweden, um, how confident are you uh, in a scale of 1 to 10 that this will succeed? Well, I think there is a correlation between uh, the sort of deal value that you aspire to and the probability of success. So I'm not really dreaming of billions of dollars here. But this is, is also not rocket science. All we're trying to do here is to reintroduce testosterone blockers as a treatment uh, for early stage prostate cancer. And, and there used to be antigen blockers for that. Uh, and the reason why they're not there anymore is that uh, guidelines no longer recommend them because of the systemic side effects. So now we're producing something that has exactly the same effect, only without the systemic side effects. So arguably it's a good case without too much consideration. I could follow up on that, uh, asking that I know you can't go into detail, but I mean, uh, licensing deals uh, typically have quite a long starting stretch. So um, how how early in the process did Lids uh, reach out to potential takers? And would you say that you have more than one discussion ongoing? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the reach out started already uh, over a year ago, so so it's it's been ongoing. It's not starting right now. Uh, but our aim, as we also write in our quarterly report now, is to come to a conclusion during the course of next year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you are a relatively new CEO, like you mentioned. Would you say that this business development side has been your main focus, or what is your main focus right now uh, when you came into this? Yes, uh, I was uh, recruited to Lids in, and started the uh, 1st of September, uh, and I guess uh, the change of CEO is, is a demarcation of the change of focus from pharmaceutical development to, to business development, so nothing strange about that. So yeah, I know you talked about. Um, obviously, you presented your um, your unique selling point here. But if you could just, I mean, oncology is a very busy area. There's lots of companies. If you were to just sum up, what is Lids your main selling point? Well, there's a company here in Lund called Camurus, which I think is is a similar thing to to Lids. Of course, they've advanced much further than we have at this at this point in time. They have a depot technology and they apply the same business model, collaborating with other big farmers and also developing uh, their own drugs. Uh, but we do pretty much the same as Camuras does, but only for intratumoral injections, because that's where our technology has some USPs. And maybe it would be good to add also that we have, of course, a protection against generics, even though that we used established APIs, because uh, the traditional approach of generics is to go for bioequivalent studies, i.e. you measure uh, the amount of drug in the bloodstream, but that's of course not possible here because the, the amount of drug in the bloodstream is minuscule uh, and the amount of drug that causes the effect is, is locked in the tumour. So it's not possible for generics to come in and, and just do the traditional copy approach. So if... When we see you at the next summit <laughs> in a year, um, where would you, what, what will I be asking you then? Where will LIDS be then? Well, if, if we're able to, uh, to secure the deal on Liproca Depot, then I think we are a, a, a very, at a very different stage because not only will we be in a completely different monetary situation, but we will also have proven the entire business model concept, taking an established API, adding value to it by putting it into our formulation and realizing that value by being able to make a deal. So hopefully we'll be in that situation and we can talk for hours and hours about that. I look forward <laughs> to that. It's always fun to talk to you, Anders. And thank you so much, Anders. Thank you so much.